you can't really escape from one scenario, dream scenario, to another. You know, they talk now about how Stephen Hawkins was saying that, that with aliens and, and Earth has only got so much more time left and that we'll have to move to another planet before he passed away. And, this, and it, that's not going to help anything. When you read the Course, when you follow what the Course asks you to do, when you pray to the Holy Spirit, when you ask for guidance and everything, you are appealing, you are appealing to your higher self, but you're also appealing to that part of your mind that knows who you are. That's why we pray. That's why we meditate. Because if this is all a simulation, how do we get out of the simulation except we have to go into the mind. The mind is extremely powerful. The mind is, Jesus tells us, is very active and it never sleeps. You know, it, it, it's so powerful and it's so active. It can believe it's dreaming, it can believe it's sleeping, but the actual mind that God created is so vibrant and so powerful. And that's why we do what we do. We, that's why we do all this mind training. You know, Jesus says an untrained mind can accomplish nothing. That's why in our communities we do so much collaboration, so much mind training. There's actually a purpose behind this, and that's the mind training. We're not used to collaborating. We're not used to communicating so fully. We're not used to joining so much. We're, we're used to that private mind, private thoughts, walking our way alone, you know, me, myself, and I, like that Jim Carrey movie, Me, Myself, and Irene. It's, we're so focused on that personality self and so identified with the doer that we don't know our being, our Christ being. We've heard that too, you know, it's just, well, there is no God and, and just, there is no, you don't, there is no afterlife. You're just stuck here doing what you're doing, your mundane little personality life, then you die, it's nothing. You face the nothingness. You've got to get in touch with your feelings, you've got to get in touch with your thoughts, and you've got to get in touch with your belief. You, that you have to get in touch, like Carl Jung said, you, you're not going to wake up by, by finding light beings, you have to uncover the shadow, he said. That's what you should put your, all your effort, is uncovering the shadow. And of course you will get those mighty companions and those light beings and be sometimes beautiful mystical experiences and visions which really let you know you're in the right direction. But, but the focus needs to be, you know, seeking not to change the world, seek rather to change your mind about the world. And it needs to be that it's not about trying to find the light, it's about being willing to uncover the, the blocks to the awareness of love's presence in consciousness. If you put every ounce of effort, every bit of energy you have, that's, that's what the parable of David is, it's just been like three decades of putting every ounce of every energy, not on accomplishing anything, not on achieving anything the world, not on accumulating anything, Nothing, none of that. I've just put it in the other direction on seek inside the kingdom of heaven within and focus on the mind training and focus on uncovering those blocks, those beliefs, those thoughts that are blocking the light. And you have to do it like a laser beam. You have to really do it with everything you've got because if, if you're kind of doing half and half, like, oh, I kind of like the world, you know, okay, I'm going to die, all right. And somebody wrote to me today, they say, I, I am definitely not ready for resurrection. <laughs> right here on Easter weekend, you know, I, get, I got a Facebook message, I am definitely not. There are things in this world that I still value, and I, I don't think I can do this. It really was, it was like a, a, not a happy message. And I said, listen, it's not your job to convince yourself, it's the Holy Spirit's job to convince you. And if you still value things in this world, that's okay. You let the Holy Spirit use those things that you still value to unwind you and show you that there's something more valuable. Don't give in. Don't think, oh, I'm, I'm cheating on the Holy Spirit. No, no. The Holy Spirit will take you with whatever you believe, whatever you value, and He'll say, great, let's work right here, right now. Let's work with this. 
You value things, that's fine. I'll use those things that you value to take you higher and higher. There's no pen punishment. There's no penalties. It's just if we don't give ourselves over, give, give our mind over to the Holy Spirit to use, then it's just a delay maneuver. That's all we're doing. We're delaying the inevitable.